Hey guys, it's Kaya with Craft My Day. Thanks for tuning in. We are going to flip this butt ugly grandma tray into an everyday serving tray. So I've taped up the edges with um, plastic packing tape, but you can use masking tape, electrical tape, whatever you have on hand to protect the steel part. I am going to be using Rust-Oleum Ultra Primer to cover up those ugly cardinals. You know, no grandma decor over here. So we're just gonna do short light burst to cover up um, the paper part. And I started with the edges first, just so that I could get those out of the way and make sure that they got up into every crevice. You just wanna be really careful to stay within the taped boundary. And then I went ahead and did the middle. Now you probably could have peeled the sticker paper up, but the last time I attempted to do something like that, I could not get my paper up evenly. So I decided to just cover it up with black spray paint. And that worked out really well because I was able to get it covered up all in one layer. So you just wanna make sure you're, um, you know, staying about six inches away from the bottom so you don't get any paint pooling. I mean, I'm here, I'm just making sure I get in all the edges, and then we're just going to leave it here to dry. So back in my craft room, we're going to mix up some epoxy. My brand of choice is Envirotech Light. I prefer the big jugs, but they do sell this brand in a small trial bottle and a beginner size bottle, so I will place the link for that below in the description box. I'm not going to use a scale to measure my epoxy because I've been doing this for a while. I've got my own method down pretty well, but you can use a food scale to measure to make sure you get an exact amount. Mine's all old and beat up and junky, but you can pick them up from anywhere. You want to make sure that it's perfect. If it's even a few grams off of more resin than hardener, your uh, project won't cure and it'll stay sticky and you'll either have to strip it and start over or put additional layers on it. So as you see here, it's kind of hazy and has little strings in it. That's just letting you know that it's not fully incorporated. You wanna mix it for at least three minutes. Be sure to scrape the sides, scrape the bottoms, work it all the way around. Different brands have different mixing instructions, so you know, follow your brand's instructions. My room is pretty warm, so this batch came together very quickly. The warmer your workspace, the warm, faster your epoxy is going to cure. Um, you should be wearing gloves when you do this also. I did not, but I should have been. I'm just showing you here that it's all clear and ready to go. So I'm going to be adding in some mica powder. Um, I bought the two colors as part of a 30 pack set and I put the link for that in the description box also so I'm going to be using the silver gray and the black and I'm just using about a teaspoon of each color and you can use pigment powder you can use acrylic paint I have seen people use crushed up Dollar Tree eyeshadow in place of the mica powder since it's basically the same thing so feel free to use whatever you have on hand. You just want to make sure that it's fully incorporated into that epoxy. You don't want any clumps of mica powder or clumps of paint because that will not um, look good once you have the epoxy set. It's just going to be a little, going to look like little pieces of trash in it. So just mix everything in really well and make sure that it's really smooth. And again, I should be wearing gloves. Don't be like me. Wear your PPE. So I'm just going to sprinkle that epoxy. Not sprinkle. It's not, they're not sprinkled. I'm going to pour <laughs> that epoxy all over the bottom of that tray. And I'm going to use my little spatula to smooth it out. I'm making sure that I get it into all those corners without getting up on the edges and the sides of the tray. 
Although if you do mess up and get some on the side of your tray, that's an easy fix. Just get some baby wipes and rubbing alcohol and wipe up those epoxy spills once you get done. So you just want to make sure you get into all those corners and make sure that it's spread evenly. Epoxy is self-leveling, so it has a tendency to pool down into the middles. So you want to make sure that you make it spread even and up into the corners. I'm just showing you my little cool mixing stick. I got those as a pack off Etsy and they are absolutely wonderful. I forget who sells them. I'll try and look for the link. So here I'm just tilting that tray and manipulating it to make sure that my epoxy is level. I'm going to use my Wagner heat gun, also a link for that, on high here just to get that epoxy warmed up. Heat is important because it pops the micro bubbles and it gives your project a glass-like finish. So I start my heat on high for about 30 seconds and then I drop it down to low until I get the consistency that I like and then I just twirl that tray to help make sure that it's um, evenly spread out and that there's no harsh line sometimes when you're just pouring and spreading it out it's not really all glass like you'll see like streaks and I didn't want any of that I wanted it to just be really smooth so I've got another small batch of epoxy here that I'm mixing up and we're going to be adding the pigment colors for the next layer. And you just want to make sure you mix each layer really well. And again, I work in small batches because it makes it easier with less waste. I can't afford to waste any epoxy. That's a premium art supply for me. So I mix my epoxy up in that big cup and then I split them into smaller cups so that I can work with multiple colors. And I'm going to put the copper in one bowl and again just a little teaspoon of that. A little bit of those mica powders go a really long way. And I just dump it into the bowl. And then I've got some white with just a little bit of copper and all copper in the other bowl and you're going to mix them together. Same process as the first layer. Make sure they're mixed in really well. We don't want any clumps. We want everything to be smooth. When I'm using these smaller bowls I will pull that epoxy all the way up against the sides. That way I'm smashing out any big clumps. I'm going to do the same for the cup with the pearl white. Uh, it's like slightly off-white because we added a little bit of copper. Mm -hmm. But we're going to do the same exact process. Fully incorporate those mica powders into that epoxy. And now we're going to go ahead and pour, pour. Less is more. You can always go back in and add more epoxy, but it's kind of difficult to scrape it out and remove it since we're already got that base layer and it's wet. So I'm just going to do some little streaks and then I'm going to do the same thing with the white. And you can just kind of pour those in however you want to. Just start with thin lines and then add more as you go along. I do have epoxy left over in those cups in case I want to go back in and add more colors, but for now I'm going to sit them off to the side. I'm going to go in with my heat gun again just like we did for the base layer. You know, you want to be moving back and forth constantly. We don't want to stay in any one spot. When I'm on high, I stay about a fifth length away from the epoxy and then I will turn my setting down to low so I can get right up on that epoxy not touching it just very very close to get those lines off and out and what I'm showing you here now is that I had a few clumps that weren't mixed in that's what they're gonna look like you see how they didn't dissolve 
so I just use the tip of that spatula to pick them out. So now I'm going to start with the heat and I'm starting on high to remove all those micro bubbles. You want to warm your epoxy up. It's going to warm up that tray so everything will start to mix together and to cure. But you don't want to burn it. Epoxy burns very quickly. You'll know it's burned because it will discolor and it will start to bubble. That's a no-go. Once that happens, you have to strip it. There's no way to fix it. Even if you go over it, that one section is always going to show through as being burned. Um, I've done that a few times. So just start on high real quick and then go to low. It's better to add more time working on low than to scorch it because you were too high heat. And I just take my time and I'm going to add heat and then I'm going to twirl it. And then I'm going to add heat and twirl it. So here I'm just tilting my project, trying to get the composition that I like. I like soft line. Um, I don't like the harshness and I like the epoxy to have some movement. So you'll just keep twirling it. and do you get a composition that you prefer and you don't have to do this if you like it the way that it is you can leave it there I mean it's your choice that's the great thing about epoxy is it's always different every time you can never get the same results twice so I'm just going back in with a little bit more of that silver for that area because it was a little blank and then I'm going to add a little more heat. Every time I add epoxy, I add heat. Even if I have already previously went over that section, I will go over it again on low. Because anytime you add epoxy, that is bubbles that you're adding to your piece also. So you've got to make sure you go back in with the heat because you don't want any bubbles or... Um, pits or fish eyes and fish eyes are places where your epoxy did not take all the way in a piece like this you wouldn't get fish eyes because there's so much epoxy but if you're doing it in multiple layers that is something that can happen so we're just going to twirl it again until it comes together And I really like how this one turned out. The tray was actually $30. I picked it up for five bucks, so I'm pretty pleased. It was an easy piece to do, and I can use it all year long. So now I'm gonna go in, and we're gonna add some glitter. And I'll be honest, I wish I would've stopped right here and not out of the glitter, but I'm a glitter fanatic, and I felt like glitter makes everything better. So I'm using Caesars Palace from Glitterful, and that is my favorite glitter company of all time. I've used them time and time again. They have really great shipping. They're not paying me for this ad either. I just have followed them for a really long time, and I like to shout them out whenever I use their products. So if you look at our playlist, we've actually done a few glitter unboxings with them. So check them out if you're looking for a good glitter distributor. They have tons of color. So I mix that glitter straight into my epoxy. I just stirred it up really well, same as I did for the mica powder. And I'm going to use my spatula to just um, drizzle some s small lines and sections onto the tray. I really didn't know what I was going for here. I just felt like glitter made everything better. And I would say this is the one case where I went one step too far and then had to keep going which sometimes does happen I mean crafting is never perfect it's always a game of experimentation so I mean I don't know if we're gonna call this a fail it was just better than those but ugly cardinals <laughs> and now I have something fancy when guests come over so I just keep adding glitter in these little lines
-hmm. And you can use whatever kind of glitter you want. If you wanted to use alcohol inks with clear epoxy, you could do that also. If you wanted to add crystals or rocks mm -hmm. or broken glass shards, um, I do a lot of mason jars, so sometimes when I have one that breaks and it has alcohol ink on it, I will just take a hammer mm -hmm. and crush it up and use the broken glass bits as the crystals on my pieces. So you can use aquarium rocks, sand, any kind of additive that you would like and just drop it right into your epoxy while it's still wet and then you're gonna go back over it with um, extra clear epoxy that is not required I just do that to make sure that it's sealed in there good and I don't have to do an additional layer um, there's not going to be, if I had stopped right here, there wouldn't have been any glitter that you would have been able to feel. It would have been all sealed in and ready to use because I dropped a thick layer on top. I'm still going to go over that with a heat gun just to make sure that that clear has no bubbles. I don't want any micro bubbles on this piece. Envirotex, I feel like, does a good job of managing those bubbles um i like their formula better than amazing clear cast which is a brand that i've used before um i don't have a lot of micro bubbles or issues with bubbles i think that's also because i use a high heat heat gun i purchased this heat gun from lowe's so i believe it gets up to like 700 degrees so bubbles usually aren't a problem for me as long as i remember to hit it on heat high heat for 30 seconds and if you remember I told you that I still had some extra epoxy left over. I always keep a spare mold on my desk so that if I do have extra epoxy left over, I can just quickly drop it into that mold and make an ornament or a gift tag or something like that. Um, this one will probably end up as an ornament. So I just drizzle it right there in that mold. I'm going to apply some heat just to make sure I hit it for the bubble. And then you're going to see me drag a pointed um, like dentist tool. I don't know what it's really called. I use it to weed my projects and stuff. But I'm just going to drag the pointy tip through the epoxy to mix it together a little bit. And those just cure. And then I just set them to the side in a spare box. That way, you know, if I have a fancy gift for somebody, I can quickly pull one out, put their monogram on it, slap a bow on it, put it on the bag, and on I go looking extra fancy. And nobody even knew that it's just from leftover epoxy I had sitting around. So here I've let that tray dry. It's been drying for eight hours. It's completely solid, but I just felt like the glitter was too prominent. So what I'm going to do is put another layer on it. Now you'll see that my pan is a little flexy and it's kind of like a cookie sheet. When your cookie sheet, when you have a hot oven and a cold sheet, it like gives you that pop. That's how the bottom is. It's just a tad bit flexy, but it's completely sturdy. So I'm mixing up another small batch of epoxy here and I've just added a little bit of plain white mica powder and I'm going to add in just a dab of white acrylic paint now this is just cheap um, you know Walmart brand Dollar Tree brand paint and I'm using a, the smallest of dabs in it you can use as much paint as you want the more white paint you use the more um, the less opaque it's going to be. So do keep that in mind. I want to be able to see some of the copper and the glitter underneath. But I don't want the glitter to be the main feature. So I'm pouring clear epoxy into the bottom of my tray. And you'll see here that this time I did remember to wear the brand new gloves that I brought. I hope you remember to wear your gloves too because epoxy is a chemical. 
and we're just gonna spread that all through the bottom of the tray make sure you get all the way up into this corner this is gonna be my last layer so I really want this to be thick and perfect and beautiful because at this point I really wish I would have just skipped the glitter and left it but you know I got blinded by the glitter so I'm gonna take that white epoxy that we mixed up and I'm just gonna drizzle it in small lines all across my piece and you want to start in small lines and do small sections because that mica spreads so quickly once you add the heat it doesn't really provide cells um, the best way that I can think to explain that is if you have seen a resin beach scene the white always foams up and makes cells for the waves mica powder doesn't do that it just spreads so here I'm applying heat so that we can pop out those air bubbles and help get that mica to start moving around in the epoxy base and I'm going to add a little bit more white because I'm kind of going for a milky way which is a technique I've seen a lot of people use here on Instagram when they kind of want to do a cover up so I'm just adding layers of white and clear and I'm just going to tilt that tray and manipulate that resin until I have a composition that I like I heat and you might think like wow she's using that heat gun a lot but a lot of the time it's on low and it's better to just add little low doses of heat over and over than to just have it blasting on high because the chances are you're going to ruin it and burn it like the epoxy really does burn so quick as soon as you look away it's burned and I don't want to take you any chances I hate having to strip pieces and start over so I just add little low doses of heat and that's how I'm showing you here that it's popping the same way that it would if I had those cookie sheets in a hot oven I'm really only going to use this though to look fancy I'm not even going to lie you know I love Martha Stewart I have Martha Stewart has like a bunch of serving trays I know and I just needed something we moved into a new house and I'm trying to decorate not the best decorator but I'm trying to decorate so now I'm gonna go back in with clear just to help spread out that white we don't want all that white mica powder bunched up in one spot we want it to be able to see the gold and the glitter and the black underneath and the clear will help make sure that that white does just not completely overtake everything so again blast it on high real quick move it down to low and you can see when you add that heat you can see the bubbles pop I mean it they pop pretty quick and give it another tilt make sure it's spread out the way that I want it to be remember epoxy is self leveling so it's going to settle in the middle you gotta make sure that you get those corners all the way filled I had a little bit of overspill but that's an easy fix we've got a baby wipe and some alcohol rubbing alcohol just like generic rubbing alcohol you can get it from Walmart Meyer CVS Kroger anywhere they sell first aid supplies and I'm just rubbing the edges of that piece with my fingertip right above the epoxy line just to make sure there's none 
on the edges because it will dry really quickly and you won't be able to get it off. Thank you so much for watching.